Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Terry Lynn. Welcome to the University of Acadia Talks to uh, Show and Call Tonight with Franco Collins from Australia. We have Frank with us tonight to share some uh, new insight, some wonderful um, new information that's going to help everyone. Uh, you'll be amazed at the uh, results that we get. And um, also, also just to help with everyone being in agreement, all those on Acadia, this is going to be wonderful. Uh, it's exciting times. And uh, so with that, we'll turn it over to Frank. And uh, just real quick as a reminder, um, when we get to the question and answer session, if you'll star eight for those that are on the phone line, that will put you in the question and answer queue. Those that are on the chat, if you will type question in all uppercase and then uh, proper case type in your question that you're going to be asking Frank, uh, that would be great. And uh, also as a reminder, uh, this is for educational purposes and not uh, for legal advice. So with that, we'll turn it over to Frank. Oh, thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. Welcome, everyone, who have come on to listen to the call live. Thank you. And thanks, Terry. And welcome to those that will be listening to the call downloaded later on either the TalkShoe website or the University of Ficati website, which is uh, University .ucadia.info. I was talking to a number of people before the, the program tonight and while I, I don't have the chance and I, I apologize to those of you that have sent me emails and I haven't had the chance to respond and those that want to talk with me that I haven't had a chance to talk with but I have kept up to date and I know that for many that have come to this information that there remains frustration, deep frustration, when the theory comes to the practice and one goes before the courts, only to find that not only are they ignoring everything that we've been talking about, but not only are they ignoring all their own rules, but it almost appears as if they have become even worse in their approach. With this in mind, it can feel and, and, and really appear that we are, in a sense, losing hope. We, we, we lose hope because in spite of everything that we've learnt, everything we've tried, it seems that these people won't stop. And whilst we talk about the future when they will be run out of power, that day seems further and further away. In fact, when you look at the elite, and look at what's happening in the world, the setting up of a private bank in Libya, almost the instant that the rebellion started, it seems that the old tricks continue. The old system continues, and nothing appears to have stopped them in their plans to stay in power and, and extend their power. So I, I've shared something with Terry and a number of others before the call, and it was to remind myself and remind all of us of something that is in our power every day. That is the power of prayer, the incredible power of prayer. What is prayer? Why does prayer work? How does prayer work? And what is its relevance in light of what we know about Eucadia? So tonight, I'm going to take some time out from the specific talks about the Roman cult and its trickery, the courts and its procedures, history, documents and forms. And I'm just going to focus tonight on the importance of prayer, examples of incredibly powerful prayer. How does prayer work? Why is, is this so important for us to realize why prayer is so important? And a practical example of our knowledge of prayer and why our knowledge of prayer can help us enormously. Well, let me start with, with one immediate relevance to those that are facing court. You go to court with your ecclesiastical deed polls. You go to court with your executor letters. You go to court with all that you've learned 
and it appears the courts have no interest at all in recognising anything you say. No, there is no executive, there is no trust, no, we are a secular court, there is no ecclesiastical role, we don't know what you're talking about, we'll put you on a psych eval, we'll change your bond, we'll put you in prison, we'll roll right over you, and it's as if nothing that you've said matters at all. Okay? Well, what does prayer teach us immediately? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sound familiar? It should, because it's the first two lines of the Lord's Prayer. The most important prayer to any country, any group, any church, any organization that claims to be Christian. Now, last time I looked, in God we trust is the official motto of the United States. The United States, whilst it claims to be a secular society, since it changed its motto, really is predominantly Christian. So is Canada, so is Australia, so is the United Kingdom, so is many countries. So if we just take countries at this point, just for, for, for the purpose of this example, then the Lord's Prayer, strictly speaking, is the most important prayer there is. Our Father who art in heaven, what does that tell us? It tells us that our Father, our guardian, is not in the court, but in heaven. Well, when we walk in the, into the court, what do we know, the court, and what it's doing? Well, the court is claiming three things, and we've spoken about this over and over and over again through the knowledge, if we read. If we read and if we listen, then we've spoken over and over. There are three controls. They claim guardianship. They claim executorship and they claim custodianship. The guardian, through the role of the plenipotentiary, bestowed to the prosecutors, the role of the executor through the protho notary, expressed uh, also through into the court in the role of the uh, judge representing the notary role, and in the role of custodian through the role of the chancellors and the, and the Lord right through to the clerks and the role of the clerks being the chancellor managing the chancery of the court, the custodian of the custos rotolorum of the name and the roles and the register and the res. So in this first prayer, our Father who art in heaven, we enter the court. Who today is claiming to be God? Who today is claiming to to be the guardian over us by some divine right because certainly no one according to the Lord's prayer in this court has any right, any ecclesiastical right whatsoever to claim to be the guardian unless you prove to me the succession. Well, if it's not ecclesiastical then it must be civil. If it's civil, I certainly didn't give you consent to be my guardian. So which one is it? It can't be both. It's one or the other. Well, if it's neither of those, then what you're telling me is that the court full of highly armed, highly trained, highly aggressive paramilitary officials, I'm really in the presence of tyrants. I'm in the presence of pirates. I'm in the presence of criminals. I'm in the lair of thieves. And that's the power you're using. Because you certainly can't be using ecclesiastical. Because our Father who art in heaven is pretty damn clear who is our guardian. Well, let's move on. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Sound familiar? Psalm 23. Let's just stop there. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, if he's my shepherd, and in this case, it's obviously I'm part of a flock, then the Lord Jesus Christ, if one is Christian, is then my custodian. Not the clerk. Not anyone else. Not the Lord Chancellor. The Lord is my shepherd. Unless anyone in that room is claiming to be the Lord, then they have no custody by any divine right, any ecclesiastical right whatsoever. Well, then it must be civil. 
Well, I didn't certainly give civil authority to the clerk to have custody over me. And my documents clearly show that I've revoked those powers. They can't have it both ways. If they're rejecting the ecclesiastical, it must be civil. And we don't consent, then what it leaves is the room full of highly armed paramilitary people intended to intimidate us is nothing more than a den of thieves, criminals, mentally insane, that believe in nothing. They're either the very worst of apostates, being the very worst heretics, or they are criminals. They can't be, they can't be both. They can't claim to be Christian men and women and spit on the Lord's Prayer and spit on Psalm 23. It's there. It's there in front of us. But what's missing is when we forget the fact that we are the ones representing the divine. Not them. When we go to court and say, where's the divine helping us? Well, the divine is counting on us. Not to place our faith in a piece of paper, but to remember words that were taught to us as children and the power of them, the legal power of them. Well, let me round it off with one more. I've covered the guardian. I've covered the custodian. What about the executor? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners now. Okay, it's a Catholic prayer. And yes, the figure of Mary and, and, and the history of that is back to Kybel and Vatican and all of those things. But what does that prayer do? That prayer says that we entrust Mary to intercede for us. We entrust Mary as the executor of our affairs. No one else. Mary in that model. So unless the judge is claiming to be the mother or father of God, they have no right, no right whatsoever to claim ecclesiastically that they are executor. So in the three most important prayers in Christendom, regarded as the three most important prayers, we find a remedy right there that proves to a court right there that absolutely no one in that court can claim any kind of ecclesiastical authority to do what they're doing against us. It must be civil. And if it is civil, we do not consent that leaves just one thing left. We're dealing with mentally ill, insane, stupid, thugs, pirates, trolls that are usurping their own rules, let alone usurping law in general. And that's what really ultimately we'll end up seeing. Until the day they know they cannot claim the law anymore. Until that day, they will hide, they will cheat, they will lie behind it. But when that day comes, and the only time it will come, it will come in the numbers of people standing up honorably, competently, knowing who and what they are in the court, even though they are insane people, when that day comes, the game will be over. And it is coming very, very soon. Yes, they are doing evil and awful things. Yes, they are ignoring. Yes, they're laughing. Yes, in the insane, stupid arrogance that we see in them, it is as if they have learned nothing of what is coming forward. But in three of the most important prayers, pillars, of Christian society, we see the proof of their lies. And so prayer, even if we take this traditional model of the societies we live in, even if we take that model, prayer is incredibly powerful. Well, let's change gears now. Let's talk about prayer and its relevance to ourselves. <laughs> 